The Canadian University of Dubai and Souk.com have joined forces of late. It's to give students access to internships, lectures and mentoring from industry pioneers. And it's essentially to nurture entrepreneurial aspirations. Saigin Yalchin is the course lecturer. He's the founder and president of the first and the largest online private shopping club in the Middle East, Souk.com. He's a vice president at Souk.com and a partner at Jabbar Internet Group. Uh, and joins me now to talk about the entrepreneurial course. Hi Tim, thanks for having me. It's good to have you here. You know, I think I've just got something wrong in the first line there. You've just resigned, have you not, from your active role at Souk.com? Correct. Souk. So, I'm actually, re I just recently resigned from the active role I have at Soukkara and Souk.com, but still a remaining partner in the entire holding, which is basically covering all companies. But as an entrepreneur, uh, I love to start projects and getting them to certain levels, mostly multi-million dollar levels, and then focus on a new project and move on. I mean, one of the projects at the moment for you is, of course, the IDEA, the Idea Workshop. Now, this is, in a nutshell, it's students at the Canadian University of Dubai getting the chance to pitch a business idea to successful entrepreneurs who are based here in Dubai. Tell me a little bit about that. Tomorrow we will have the workshop slash conference about entrepreneurship in general and it will be uh, attended by many successful entrepreneurs. The goal of this workshop or conference, however you want to call it, is more uh, to awake entrepreneurship in students. I, I'm not pretty sure if you can create entrepreneurs just per se, but more importantly to figure out if there is someone who actually thought about entrepreneurship but never found a way to get into it and uh, the, to figure out the challenges to become and actually an entrepreneur and become a successful entrepreneur. So we are showing ways and uh, tools. So it's, a, it's an interesting point, actually, because it's something, it, it always strikes me, we have a number of entrepreneurs coming into the radio station, onto this program uh, in particular, and it always strikes me that it's something it would be very difficult to teach. There are certain key lessons and key skills that you need, uh, aren't there? Now, a little bit more about the course. It's uh, a semester long, isn't it, the entrepreneurship Correct. course. First of all, tell me a little bit about your involvement, how you came to get involved, because you're not an old guy, you're a young guy. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> and uh, also about the experiences that you've had so far. So um, when I started Sokka.com, one of my team members and actually founding team members, she was, uh, she had an, she still has a PhD. So she was working at the Canadian University part time at one point of time. And she said, well, entrepreneurship uh, needs to be taught at this university. It's, it, the Canadian University is a very forward thinking and modern uh, academic institution. She wanted to use this institution to to bring in entrepreneurship. So she, she said, uh, Sagan, you would be the right guy to do this. So she introduced me and then from there we took it forward. We actually structured the course, which became the most popular course at the Canadian University from day one. So I'm pretty happy about that. So you, you've got, what, something like 70 odd students, haven't you, doing the course for this semester. Okay. Is that because people looked at it and thought, oh, this is going to be one of those, I just sit and listen, maybe I'll learn something. <laughs> or is it that these are students that can really see an opportunity and an opening and may well have what it takes to, to start a business? I was actually really surprised and happy that we actually have really good students and interested in entrepreneurship. We we split the course into six topics, which was actually just in the beginning was explaining the entrepreneurial spirit, what is entrepreneurship. Later on, going into detailed idea, evaluation, creation uh, methods and, and tools, and then into business planning, team financing, and later on into business intelligence. So from there on, uh, we took it step by step. We, we basically gave uh, the students assignments to, to come up with their own ideas, to write business plans, to present them, and to pitch them in a real life scenario to investors, to real investors. and. Uh, test their ability and their 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 taste for entrepreneurship so there's the possibility that we're looking at uh, a Steve Jobs from the future from the Canadian University here in Dubai. But I guess also for you, it's a chance to to kind of give something back in many ways. And also, if I'm being really cynical, you could cherry pick the best students for your next venture. <laughs> it was actually one of my, uh, not my only, but our targets to find talent, especially local talent. Uh, it is it is much more expensive and uh, not really uh, sensible to always import talent if, because we have millions of, uh, of, of people in the own country and I believe that these are talented people, we just need to find them. So what we offered in exchange was inter internship opportunities, full-time uh, job opportunities 
and of course we just wanted to find out who are the real hidden gems in in in, in universities because you might be the first to get them so you're the the course lecturer you're there with paul kelly from kabone.com uh, tomorrow rabbi attire um who is the chairman and co-founder of bait.com dr salsan women and entrepreneurship and luther homan who is the president of the precise group in this very studio last night uh, as it happens all of these guys guest speaking of course but you're the lecturer you know the students best you you've said that there is going to be you, you can see some potential there uh, for the future has it met the expectations before you went into uh, arranging the course just to clarify so tomorrow there will be this event which is open for the entire student body so my students were uh, only 70 out of the entire student mm. body so uh, i'm actually i know i know the students but uh, it is actually much bigger tomorrow so uh, to the other question so did i did i see my expectations fulfilled i believe yes i think it's even more than i expected i, I thought it's going to be a, a, a slow course in the beginning because no one will really know about it and later on we might attract more attention and then become a bigger course i actually was really surprised to get so many students and actually some of them are really talented one of the things that you would label yourself as an entrepreneur, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, myself included at times, we, we suffer from entrepreneur fatigue in many ways, uh, Saigon. So it's a word that gets banded about all too often uh, these days, so much so that sometimes I feel like if I never hear it again, it'll be too soon. But mm -hmm. th there's always the point, and, and the, the real, uh, I guess, that you need to focus on the fact that we need more people to have ideas. We need people to start businesses, to begin to create jobs in the private sector. It can't be the government and the public sector all uh, the time. Absolutely. You can't have that sole responsibility lying there. The message is, is in fact, it's deadly serious, isn't it? Entrepreneurial activity is critical. Is definitely critical. And we, as you say, we can't rely on the so-called traditional industries, mm. which will take us uh, further. I think to become the number one in the Arab world, and when I say number one country, it needs to be done by innovation and, uh, and growing the market by uh, entrepreneurs. And being an entrepreneur is is good or could be bad if it just depends on the person who does that and the figure the word entrepreneurship fatigue basically might refer to the fact that there is a saturation of entrepreneurs already that everyone wants to become an entrepreneur or mm. is somehow an entrepreneur i believe um it's not the case it's just we need to create an infrastructure which facilitates entrepreneurs' uh, lives, and uh, that starts from from financing. I think that's one of the biggest biggest um, gaps we have compared to America or Europe. That financing of entrepreneurs, especially in the internet sphere, is still very much behind uh, other regions, and that is uh, partly the reason, partly because the investors or potential investors haven't seen so-called quality deals yet mm. and they they are reluctant to deviate from their mm, potential real estate investments which are uh, s secure or, or maybe with a almost guaranteed return sure. rather than going to a much more profitable or much mo higher return business which might be in the internet uh, entrepreneurship uh, field but then this is uh, still a real issue we have here. So, so the demand really hasn't been there before has it and I guess really if you you start by nurturing entrepreneurial flair at university level uh, and telling people you can go off and do your own thing you don't right. just have to join a multinational or, or join the family business well, Whatever it might be, um, if you if you do that at university level, you, you're just you're, you, the ideas will start to blossom. That's one of the reasons you've uh, created the course. When when I actually started the course, I the first question I asked was that anyone not have a business idea yet and there wasn't one person who didn't have a business idea really the point is just we want to take away the unknown out of the entrepreneurship field people basically have an idea but they don't know what to do with it and what are the exact steps to to take into consideration some ideas are just might seem ridiculous which are not some might seem obvious uh, but are ridiculous so what are the tools and frameworks you use to figure out if this uh, idea slash business idea is going to be a, a risk. 
What was it that got you involved? I mean, m- my guess is you're pretty busy with day-to-day activities. You've started a number of companies. You're involved in launching something that you won't tell me too much about <laughs> at the moment, but uh, which is fine. Is it? Is it? Was it uh, for you? Is it a case of wanting to give back, or, or are you like most entrepreneurs that you have or seem to have more hours in the day than the rest of us? <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing this for just giving back or, or, or charity. It's, it's definitely because I want to grow the market I am uh, investing mm. into myself. So the more entrepreneurs, the more people pitching to potential investors, the more money we can attract into the region, into the industry. So uh, I always believe that the more so-called competition you have in an unsaturated market, the better. Mm. Because we're just growing the market as as ma- more, more players coming in. So I always said... Uh, when we started Sukkar.com or when I later on uh, merged with Sukh.com, we were looking at competition as actually uh, good things because uh, if, if other big, when other big players ca- came in, we said it, it's really difficult to convert an offline person to an online buyer. If someone else does that for us, that's great because it's much um, cheaper and much easier to convert someone from a one online company to to another mm. so for us it's always good to have more players in the in the in the industry who are just creating more online buyers so um, I welcome entrepreneurs especially in the internet sphere one of the things about taking the plunge and we, we've talked about this a number of times before we even started talking in this interview uh, one of the things with your own business is you have to be comfortable with the level of risk that you're taking otherwise you simply wouldn't do it I mean that that's very clear but can you teach that well there are frameworks we're looking at certain risks and we're avoiding certain uh, risks which are which are really teachable I would say so we look at market risk team risk, financial risk, and product risk. These four kinds of risks are uh, usually three of them you can really eliminate by copying existing business models from other regions and saying the product actually works already. Team risk is basically to figure out if you can hire the right people at the at the uh, budget you have and that's something you can really work on. You can reduce team risk by, by having certain skills. And financial risk is uh, the risk of do you have enough money to finance the working capital need or the capital need until the company is self-sufficient. The only risk we really are never really sure about is the market risk because you will not know until you actually touch the market so uh, what you can do in this case is you can ask uh, for expert interviews you talk to experts in the industry and say what would happen if we would do this you can talk to potential consumers and customers and say would you be willing to adapt this product at this price so focus groups might help to reduce even that risk so given all these analysis analysis and frameworks at the end of the day you can come back with an educated guess of what the actual risk is you're taking and most of the time uh, i'm pretty sure i'm not really a big risk taker after i've done uh, research for over 90 days before i even think about starting so i mean as long as you're prepared in that case you're fine but there are other stresses aren't there i mean look at things like um just being able to deal with day-to-day juggling several different but i mean equally important tasks i made a list actually say you you might have to sell a new idea you may be raising funding you're worrying about paying staff you're thinking about Mm -hmm. company medical (laughs) insurance and your marketing manager's off sick your head accountant's on holiday, uh, you may have just had an argument with the wife, and not all of us can multitask, and that's a big part of it. That's true. So to be able to be to be a leader is, of course, to have the biggest burden on your shoulders. And it was always th- this juggle, as you say, between managing the company itself, but then also managing the board, which are the shareholders at the same time. So they always said you can have a startup and a healthy life. A startup or in the healthy marriage a startup and one more thing it's not <laughs> that you can have a startup healthy life a healthy uh, or happy marriage or whatever so at the end of the day of course it comes at a cost but that because it is so much to do like there mm. is so much to do in the beginning it's, you just have to try your best, don't you? <laughs> Sagin Yeltsin <laughs> is the founder and president of Sukar.com, the online private shopping club. He's the vice president of Sukar.com, and he's a partner at the Jabbar Internet Group. He's also the course lecturer with the Canadian University of Dubai on the entrepreneurship course. Sagin, it's been really good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Tim.